Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to be pouring a set of Dragon Skin Coasters. I'm going to be shooting for like a black and white with a little copper, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see if that works. Um, I tried to do these coasters once before. Um, it was on the Bear Woods Supply Facebook page. I did a live. This was like two weeks ago. Um, and I used a different resin that I'm not used to using. I used the Moss Tabletop Epoxy, which is a great resin, but it has a much shorter work time than what I'm used to. So by the time I started pouring, the resin was hot. And by the time I got like the last puddle in, I was having to like glop it out of the cup. So I had a feeling that I wasn't going to get the crackly effects. It wasn't going to spread like, you know, like it normally does with my usual resin. And let me show you what the result was. So this was the pouring side and you can see it barely moved. Normally when you do a dragon skin, like a puddle pour, I should say a puddle pour, um, everything will move into the center and it'll sometimes completely close up or you might have like, you know, the size of a quarter that's still open, but that's all it moved. <laughs> so I knew as I was watching it, I'm like, oh boy, it's not moving. So I'm not going to get that really nice color blending and crackles. So then this is the side that I ended up with and it looks like maybe the surface of the moon. It's definitely not as crackly as it normally is. So for these, I actually ended up putting a decal on them and then just put a, a clear top coat. And they ended up really pretty, but not the crackle look. You can see it's, you know, there's a lot of areas where it's pretty smooth. It's just not that defined crackle. There's a little bit of it around the edge, but. So I'm gonna try and redo these today, the same colors. You can see the white and the black and the copper. So I'm gonna use the same colors, the same amount, of, same drops of everything, um, the same pouring order, everything the same, except the resin is different. So tonight I'm using um, the Naked Fusion one-to-one -one resin. I've mixed up 12 ounces of it, and I'm doing these four coasters, which I just saw some debris in there. Um, since the coasters are going to be upside down, you definitely want to make sure they're cleaned out. All the little dog hairs out. I just rearranged my studio. Moved my desk into the other room and kind of spread out. I've got more shelves in here and I, I feel so discombobulated. <laughs> I still have stuff on the floor. I'm waiting for a couple more shelves to come in. I'm just completely like not uh, organized yet getting there. So, all right, let me see here. So I need one, two, three, four little cups. I'll post pictures on my Facebook page once I get everything set up because I'm really excited with um, all the different places I have to put things now. I have drawer organizers and shelves and I even have a little tool organizer here on my table. I feel way more organized than usual. <laughs> so, all right, I'm gonna put um, two ounces in each of these cups. And there's six ounces in this big cup, so I should get three out of this first cup here. These little cups, they say they're three ounces, but I don't know if that's like full to the brim. Because they're definitely more than two thirds full when I think I have two ounces in there based on my big cup having six ounces. So I don't know, I've never actually sat down with like a real measurer, <laughs> like a, a cooking measuring cup and measured these out. Um, it says right on this cup, 
approximate measurements. <laughs> so I don't know how accurate it is, but I've got three cups with the same amount. So I'm guessing they're all about two ounces. And then I'm gonna take two ounces out of this one. So I'll just pour the same amount. So I should have about four ounces left in this big cup. Alrighty, let's get the colors mixed up. So now when you do a dragon skin pour like this, you always want to have at least one transparent color. And then a lot of times you'll see people will have a cup that's just got clear in it and they finish with the clear. I'm actually going to use the same transparent color throughout and I'm going to finish with it. I'm not going to have a separate cup with the clear. So I think the clear kind of dilutes the colors a little. I don't know. We'll see. I'm trying this out. Like I said, the first time I did this, it didn't work. So I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. Um, so I'm just going to do four drops of this black alcohol ink. And I'm not really going for a super dark black. I just want like um, kind of a light gray transparent color. It's really um, almost clear, but not quite. And some black inks tend to look a little bit green, which this one's not bad. So I'm happy about that. It's not casting to the green side. So that's what we got. Like I said, it's just barely tinted with the gray, which is what I wanted. All right, um, next white mica in this cup so for the white mica i'm just using my jewelescent luster white i'm just going to put two scoops in here it's not very scientific <laughs> this. This cup's pretty full, gotta be careful. These other coasters that I have here that are curing, um, I just poured those and that's another video that that is up on my YouTube or will be up on the YouTube. I don't know if this one's going to post first or that one, but um, that set is a total experiment as well. I printed, I, I tested out this new thing I discovered using acetate and a laser printer and foil and a lamination machine. <laughs> so. I created some really pretty foil um, images, decals. They, they're not stickers, they're just on acetate. But I embedded those in some clear resin and I used some crushed glass and I let that cure. And then uh, tonight I just poured the background with the blue and the green. So I'm really eager to see what, what the result is tomorrow morning. Hopefully they're not horrible. Um, it's the first time I've done that. So I don't know, but I will be posting the video. So even if it doesn't turn out, I'll still post it because I think it's a good experiment. And even if it's not what I wanted, it's still gonna be a good learning tool. And I'm sure I will be doing many more and refining it over the next several months. And hopefully, I don't wanna say perfecting it because I don't know, you can never really perfect resin. It has a mind of its own for sure. All right, 
And I'm gonna mix up the copper. So I'm using the Pearl X Super Copper. I absolutely love this mica powder. It's gorgeous. So I'm gonna do two scoops of this one as well. I'm trying to mix up the mica powders early so they have a chance to sit while I mix up the other colors. And then any mica that I didn't mix in all the way, hopefully will float up to the top and I can give it another good stir before I pour. Because if you don't mix up your micas, you think you have them mixed, they look mixed, and you think, oh good, they're all mixed up. Um, and then there's just a couple little clumps of mica hiding in there. And then when you pour, they settle on the bottom. And the bottom in this case is gonna be the top of my coasters. And I definitely don't want mica powder clumps on the tops of my coasters. So I'm pouring the mica, or um, mixing the mica first, just to give it a chance um, for those clumps to kind of settle out. And then I can mix one more time. Look how pretty this color is. Just beautiful. These Pearl X pigments are so neat. The gold, I've used the gold before on doing um, a dragon skin and they just create the neatest effects. They get kind of bubbly. It's not air bubbles, but they just create these really cool reactions within the pour. So hoping for something similar with the copper tonight. All right, next is the Armor Art Epoxy Pigment in Black. And this I want to be opaque because I've got, I've, I've got this gray, but it's transparent. So I want an opaque black. So I'm going to do, let's see, I think I'll start with five drops. We'll see what, what happens there. One... So it's very thick. Three, four, and That is definitely opaque. Perfect. All right, and then the last one is my white and I'm just using the cast and craft. I'm gonna do 10 drops. I want this to be opaque as well. When I was using that other resin for this same pour, by this time, the cups were hot and I wasn't even pouring yet. <laughs> so I knew, I was like, oh man, that's not gonna work. And unfortunately I was on a live, so I had to keep pouring. Um, so at least the people watching still got to see the pouring technique, even though the result wasn't exactly what was intended. Um, but the technique is, exactly the same it just was the resin um, cured way too fast resins have ideal uses and it helps if you understand your resin that you're working with so 
that uh, moss tabletop. Like I said, it's a great resin, um, but it's not really meant for making coasters. I thought I'd give it a try. And I think maybe if I was just making one coaster where I could work a lot more quickly, it would probably work good, but I've used it for coating things, for putting top coats on stuff, and it's it's perfect for that because it's a thicker viscosity. Um, it's crystal clear. It cures really fast. There's um, the bubbles are bubble situation with that epoxy is very similar to the Naked Fusion, so not bad at all. Um, so if you're doing like tabletops or coating things, I would definitely recommend looking into it. They do have a moss art, artist, I think, art epoxy, artist epoxy. I'm gonna try out, I haven't ordered it yet, but I wanna try that out too, because I've heard it's really nice. So I'm always looking, always looking to add to my resin shelf. <laughs> Cause I think, like I said, I think, a lot of resins are good for different types of projects, you know? I just can't see finding like one resin that's perfect for everything. That doesn't seem possible, so. All right, it's got my white mixed up. It's mainly opaque. I don't wanna add any more to it. Um, all right. Give these two micas another quick stir. I always like to really scrape the bottoms and the sides on these two. So I wrote everything down. What am I doing? Okay, so I'm gonna start with the clear. I'm calling it clear, but it's not really clear. I'm gonna put these in order. All right, clear, then the white mica, then the black, then the white, and then the copper. So that's my first pour, and each of these are gonna have two pours, and then this one's actually yeah, they're all gonna have two pores. So this will be first and last. So each of these has to go twice. <laughs> so I'm just gonna start with this. I'm gonna try to pour about the same amount in each one. I think I used too much because I don't have much left here. Oh boy, I only have like one ounce left. Oh well, I have to be uh, stingy with my last pour. <laughs> All right, move this out of the way. All right, next is the white mica. So um, when you do the dragon skin or the crackle or whatever you want to call it, you always should start with a transparent layer and then a mica because that's what starts the crackling. If you just pour your mica first, you may get some crackling, but it's not gonna be as extreme. So that looks like a tiny bit more in here. I'm trying to use about half of it. And the black.
I think I want to try one of these where I'm not pouring in the center. That's going to be one of my upcoming videos, I think, <laughs> just to see what will happen. I know everything moves to the center, but I wonder what happens if you start it off to the side. Just don't want this to drip in my other coasters. All right, then the cast and craft. So I do live pours most of the time on Tuesday nights on my Facebook page, Tifton Studio. I try to be pretty regular with that. I might miss one here and there, but usually Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Central Time. And then I also do lives on the Bearwood Studio, or not Bearwood Studio, Bearwood Supply on their Facebook page. And those are um, not the same day every week. Those kind of vary. So if you follow their page or follow them on Instagram, they always post um, a little notification, um, you know, usually the day before. So if you follow them, then you should see that. All right, so I'm just gonna heat gun these real quick. Now for my second layer, I'm doing them in a slightly different order. So I'm going to do the black first, then the white mica, then the copper, then this white, and then whatever is left of this clear. All right. I just know... These are all going to be in my way. <laughs> Let me move them back over here. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Now I'm going to use all of this up now. And these coaster molds are not going to be full. Um, they're each, they have about three ounces in each but that's not gonna fill them up, which is fine. They're actually very deep molds. They're five inches across, so they're pretty big molds. You could always come through if you wanted to, after they cure, you could dome them, but I don't. Three ounces, in this size is plenty thick. Like the coasters don't need to be any thicker than that. Otherwise they're kind of clunky. So I don't usually dome them. Right, next, white mica. You notice I usually give a little stir again before I pour, just in case. Doesn't hurt at all.
you do need to be careful not to drip any colors out of place in your coasters. <laughs> so it's a little, uh, I'm being risky by working above them, moving my cups above them, going back and forth, but This uh, copper is so pretty. I love copper. It's one of my favorite metal tones. So you see this little drip right there. I hope that doesn't affect anything, but it might. keep debating in my head if I should mix up a little more clear because this last clear that you put in really pushes all the colors together and it is pretty important so I don't know if one ounce is going to be enough to really push them out What should I do? Mm, let me try. Let me just try pouring this in and see what happens. Might be okay, actually. Have to remember next time not to be so enthusiastic with that first layer. <laughs> bit out of here. Bring you down for a close up. Focus, please. There we go. So you can see in the middle, it's like almost looks like a 
surface of the moon, kind of. That's what I meant by those Pearl X colors give like a bubbly effect. And that's what I meant is that those lumps in there, they look like little bubbles, but they're not air bubbles. Um, it's just something that the mica does. So, and you can see they're starting to move really well. So I'll come back in about a half hour, check on them, and I'll take some videos so you can see how much they move in that time. And then uh, we'll demold in the morning. So I'll see you in a bit. Hey guys, so it's been about a half hour. You can see they've closed up quite a bit. So I'm pretty excited. I think we're gonna get uh, some kind of good result. Um, let me grab. So just as a reminder, this is the one I did in the live. And you can tell a huge difference in how much these have closed up. So that's a good sign. <laughs> So we'll see what they look like in the morning. Good morning. So I'm ready to demold these. Just wanna give you a look before I take them out. They spread really nicely. This one is kind of interesting. This is the one when I was pouring, everything was kind of off to the side a little. So curious to see how that one turns out. Some interesting effects are on the sides. So, all right, let's get these out. One nice thing about this technique is bubbles around the edges usually aren't a problem. All right, take a look at the edges. That looks really cool. And, ooh, the copper definitely took over, but you can still see some of the white and then the black lacing. So pretty. All right, I'm dying to see how this one turned out with this. This looks like a peacock feather. <laughs> These are still just a tiny bit bendy. It's been about 12 hours since I poured. So they're not 100% solid. That's why I've got my gloves on. So you don't really see this effect on the front is kind of a weird area right there. But otherwise, it looks very much like the other one. I think I'm going to do an experiment where I pour the colors in a different order in each coaster and just see what happens with that. Because I pour them all the same, so obviously you're going to get the same results for the most part. But I wonder how changing the order would change up, um, you know, the finished result. The top sides on these are kind of cool too. You could use these either way. They've all got really cool edges. I think I'll leave the edges exposed. All right, well, there we go. Let's come in for a close up. Yeah, I am absolutely in love with how these turned out. Wow. I wasn't sure. I thought the copper would definitely be visible, but I wasn't sure, you know, to what degree. So, very, very thrilled. They look so neat. Get these out of the way. Those edges. It looks like paint dripping down. So cool. All right, you guys. Well, that's that. Thanks again for tuning in as always. If you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.